Hi, so I wanted to do a quick discussion of the final research paper, mainly for one big significant point, because it's the one that's kind of the difference between a solid A and if everything else is perfect, an A minus, but more likely a B. Um, and it's something that, while it's only worth two of the total 30 points, it's pretty significant. Um, we've kind of been talking about it since the beginning of the course. It's that whole issue of historiography. And it goes all the way back to the Joan Scott essay that you read in the first week. So I'm not going to go through <coughs> excuse me, everything having to do with the final paper. You've all pretty much already looked at it. Um, I do think these are very helpful, for particularly the final research paper checklist. Definitely make sure you're looking at that. Um, more to the point, though, I want to bring you down to um, the... grading rubric right here. Um, all of this is stuff that I know you've all read. For the most part, you've already familiar with it because you've been doing the other exercises in the course that uh, require you to do most of those things. But here with the grading rubric, it shows you, hang on, let me try to move this over so it's in the frame a little better. Hold on. There we go. It shows you what everything is worth. Uh, your your introduction and your thesis statement are worth two points, and I would uh, definitely um, encourage you to be sure you've got a solid thesis statement. Your thesis statement is what you intend to prove. It's not an outline of the paper. It's not a summation of the points you're supposed to be covering. It's what you actually intend to prove about gender in the time period and society that you have chosen. So it needs to be a statement that takes a position, as they call it. And it should be the last sentence in your introduction, and it should be repeated in different words in your conclusion. Um, but your thesis statement is definitely <laughs> a statement of what you plan to prove. All right, so you identify your specific society, including the time period and geographical region. Most of you can do that reasonably well. But this is the part right here that I really want to talk about. It explains the significance of using gender as a category of historical analysis. And what this effectively means is that you start with Joan W. Scott's essay, because it literally is the foundation of gender history. And you consider her idea about gender being a focal point for discussions of power, particularly in societies. You can look at it from the political position, the economic position, the religious position, the social position, even the household and family position. <coughs> but that is foundationally what Scott is arguing, and that is what has set us on the course of a discussion of using gender as a category of historical analysis. So consider Scott, and then consider how the sources you're using also talk about gender and how for them uh, what the balance is in the power dynamics in your society. All right, then uh, you're summarizing how the chosen society understands or defines gender roles, ideals, and expectations. You're evaluating how gender constructs influence the social, economic, political, legal, religious, or cultural history of the chosen society and then you provide your conclusion. You have your five scholarly secondary sources, you utilize two primary sources, um, and your written, your, uh, your mechanics particularly, you've got your cita citation where you need for it to be, and um, your grammar, spelling, all of that is good. And then the APA formatting actually has a separate category of its own at this point, as does page requirements. You need to have uh, 10, double spaced pages uh, in total to get the page requirement over that gets you into the distinguished category and then your content development um, how well your paper is organized how well your arguments flow from one to the other but again one of the big points I wanted to get to you here with is um, this explaining the significance of using gender as a category of historical analysis so be sure that you consider that in your paper think again about Joan Scott and how her thesis and her ideas apply to what you're writing and to your topic point all right if you have any questions about the paper please email me and let me know um, 
again, be sure you look at the grading rubric because that's what I have to look at and that's what I'm evaluating. So look at that and be sure that you're covering all those points in the course of addressing your paper and, and demonstrating, proving to me your thesis, your position and, and how uh, secondary sources and the primary sources support that.